Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to people across the globe. So let's get started. My name is RK and I am also a member of the OneDrive and SharePoint team. And I'm really super excited to be engaging with the community. You know, over the over the last couple of months, we've been getting a lot of feedback from the community asking for the tiles layout that we currently have in document libraries to be available on modern lists. So we've heard your feedback and we're really excited to announce that you can now format your modern lists to appear as tiles. So when I walk you through the examples today and how we do it, I'd like to also give you a scenario so that you know the examples become a little, a little bit more clear. So let's consider that we are a company that sells Microsoft devices such as a surface line of computers and accessories, Xbox, etc. And centrally, we maintain a master inventory of our live products in a SharePoint list. Now, with the list, we have two main kinds of users or consumers. We've got our staff of field workers who identify products by name. And they are generally interested in product details such as the price, the product name, uh, the product features, the amount of stock we have, and so forth. We also have a bunch of back-end employees who you know, identify products by ID, and they are really interested in more details such as the vendor, the store location, etc. So let me quickly switch over and show you the current list that we have. So the list that you see in front of you, that is the master inventory list that we're maintaining. As you can see, it is extremely data heavy and isn't really useful for our field employees. A lot of text everywhere and the images are kind of too small uh, to in the, in the current size. Let me just take a pause and ask, uh, is the text readable for you? Yep, all good, all good. Okay, perfect. So, you know, we have view formatting today and we can use view formatting techniques to format this list to make it look a little bit more appealing. Let me go ahead and switch to another view where I've already formatted it as cards. So in this view, you can see that it is much easier for front end employees to read it because the image is bigger, it becomes more valuable and they only care about certain columns. So we can choose what columns are you want to display in this format. However, there are inherent problems with this. Bear in mind right now we are just formatting each list item or a row to look as a look like a card. Now the problems here is number one, there's a lot of real estate that's being wasted. And I have to scroll left, right, up, down to see you know, complete information or look at all my data at a glance. So to solve this, we've come up with a new layout, which is tiles layout. Let me quickly swap over to the original list. And even here, right, we've got to scroll left, right, up, down, and it becomes pretty cumbersome if you want to get a, a bird's eye view of your entire inventory. Now in the view drop down, you see there are three different layouts that we have, the list and compact list that you already have, and we've introduced a new layout called tiles. As I click this, you will see this is the new layout that we've defined, where all your content, you can see it in one glance. You have the picture, you have basic all uh, fields that, that are important to you, and you can scroll up and down with fewer scrolls, you can see your entire data. And the best part is this entire view is reactive, which means we don't have to worry about uh, scrolling left and right. And if I resize the window, it automatically resizes as well. Okay. Now let me go into I mean, another benefit that we have with this layout is it's not a formatting of a view, rather it is multiple different layouts. So as a user, I can quickly switch between either the tiles view or the list view seamlessly without having to do a page load, which means I can see my data in different different formats as and when I require. Now let me go ahead and walk you through how you can configure tiles view for your modern lists. Right, so for those of you who've played around with view formatting in the past, these properties should be pretty familiar to you. You've got your basic schema definition, you choose additional row class if you want to, or you go ahead with row formatter and you, and you specify your JSON inside the row formatter, which is used to format the view. In the earlier example that I showed you, each row is a card, I had formatted it using row formatter. Now, the change that we've made is we've added a new property called tile props, within which you can define the width and the height of the card, and you can define your own custom formatter within the formatter property of tile props. The key thing to keep in mind here is that anything you do within tile props only affects your tile layout. It does not, <coughs> excuse me, it does not affect your list layout and vice versa. Anything you define on your list layout will not affect your tile props either. For instance, you can see I have height selection defined both at a, at a parent level as well as within the tile props. So height selection will be false for your list layout, but it will be true for your tile layout. Now switching back, let me just quickly copy this snippet of code. 
Now, if I go back to my original list, let's say I go to my list as cards view. In this view, I have not enabled tiles layout, and you can only see you have the old list and the compact list layouts. Now, if I go to format current view, as I mentioned earlier, I use row formatter to define the JSON to show each row as a, as a card. All I have to do at the very end is add the tile properties that I just copied over. And now if I save the JSON, you will see that I have a new layout that comes up in the options. Now at this point, I really haven't defined anything within tile props formatter. So if I click on tiles, I'm not going to get any. To show you how this is useful, let me go ahead and copy over the JSON. So this is the JSON I used for the previous tile layout. It's a pretty big JSON, but let me just copy just the tile properties and put it back here. Now at this point, what I've done essentially is I've taken the JSON I created for my tile layout and added it to the existing row formatter under the row formatter under tile properties. Oops. Forgot an extra bracket there. Sorry about that. Now, the beauty is I can switch between a list format, a list layout, and a tiles layout seamlessly without any issues. And as I mentioned earlier, anything I define within tile properties will only affect the tiles layout, and anything I define and under row formatter will only affect the list, list layout, which basically means you can format different two different types of layouts within the same view without having to save it as a different view. You can have one custom formatted list layout and a custom formatted tile layout running in parallel. With this, I think that come, I come to the end of my demo. Any questions that you'd like to ask? Excellent. Thank you. Yes. Excellent. Thank you, RK. Uh, let me ask the questions which is on the on the chat window. So first of all, um, awesome demo. Thank you. Uh, everybody is super excited. Uh, Slick uh, is the latest comment from David uh, on there as well. Good to see, by the way, Eric answering and and collecting the data on the on the chat window as well. Now there was a question related on supporting managed metadata. Is that supported with the tile views? Do you know? One second. Let me. Yeah, I have Shreyansh with me as well. He'll probably be better suited to answer that question. Uh, hey everyone, Shreyansh here. Uh, so, managed metadata currently isn't supported in the custom formatter. The same restriction, uh, restrictions apply as uh, as you guys uh, already know about it. Uh, yep. So, we haven't really worked on that. Uh, if the community wants, we can uh, probably uh, see if we can add that support as well. Cool. Uh, I'm just going to recap on that one. So the managed metadata columns or fields are not currently supported, but obviously if there's a demand, um, that's certainly something we're still looking into doing in the future. Now there was a question from John Liu. Just around... one second before we go to yep. the next question. There's one more thing that I forgot to mention while sure. I was talking. For sure. the new JSON, anything you define in inside the formatter part within tile props, it will follow all the rules as uh, as the formatters for custom formatting on views and columns follow, it follows the same set of rules, which means you could effectively pick up your formatter from your row formatter, plug it into your formatter under tile props, and voila, it works straight out of the box. All right, let's go on to the next question. Excellent. Uh, the next question uh, was around the, the, the group by. Uh, does the tile uh, layout support also group by uh, option? That was from John Leo. So, uh, so in the in the tiles layout, we don't have a UI entry point which allows user to set a group by. But if you yep. have it set in your view schema, uh, the tiles layout is going to respect that. Uh, this is in sync with how document library behaves with group by. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Awesome. Uh, then there was a th this really good question actually uh, from Custer uh, at Hilti. Uh, can we link directly to the specific view? Um, not precisely on the tile view discussion, but I say in the modern list, if we want to link people and, and make sure that they are arriving on the right experience, um, that's a good question. Do, uh, do we actually support that another way? At the, moment, at the moment, we can define only a default view for a list. We haven't yep. really come up with defining a default layout for a list yet, but that's something definitely that we are working on. At the moment, yep. it is you can't you can't set it though. Yes, excellent, awesome feedback uh, as well. It's good to get all of this collected. Uh, Stacy was also asking, uh, do we have a code sample available on this one already? I think this capability is this available already in public tenants, or how are we? What's the status from a 
uh, rolling perspective. I'm happy to say that this feature is 100% in production at the moment, and we've actually updated the developer documentation with information on how you can use style props. In fact, right now you can go and add this little blurb of text here, JSON, in any modern list, your custom list, and the tile, uh, tile layout will show up in your dropdown. Cool. Awesome. Um, and like like said, like RK said, and the docs are up to date, uh, so you can actually have a look on that. That blob is included in the docs as well, and I'm pretty sure that the community, well, community can then contribute samples and more samples on our column uh, formatting uh, sample gallery, and then other ones can benefit out of it as well. I'm pretty sure that uh, Chris will get a sample there within a matter of minutes. Is it already out there? Is it is it already out there, Chris? No, just kidding. Good. Uh, and there's David Ace is pasting in the link of the docs as well. Um, that's pretty much the main questions. Oh, there was a question. Can is there a way to actually hide the title of the uh, of the title of the list? Um, and I know for a fact that that's not right now possible. But that's an interesting question related on uh, if we are in a list experience, um, person would like to get would like to get rid of the list title on the on the view as well. Maybe we'll get that one in the backlog and, and think about uh, how to make that happen as a switch uh, in, in some of the settings. One more final question, and does it work with the, uh, within the list web part already? Yeah, it works on, It works in the list web part as well. Cool. That's a great, great confirmation uh, as well. Excellent. Uh, I think that's it for now. Uh, yes, everybody seems to be happy at least in that set of questions. Um, thank you, everybody, for a great set of questions. Thank you, RK, for a great demo and a great feature. This is really good. Uh, obviously, it's not just RK who implemented the feature, but it's a, it's a really great feature to get available. Um, and with, in quotes, no code, you can actually modify the experience because some people consider the JSON as a code as well. But hey, it's all debatable. Um, so thank you, RK, for that one. Mm -hmm.